C.N. Jenkins members, friends, and guests, we're so happy to have you here for another worship experience. Uh, we are so grateful for all that God is doing in the ministry here in the building and online. Today, Pastor Cannon is going to speak about when God does a new thing. Stay tuned. Stay in touch with us on social media and on Instagram, on YouTube. We'll see you soon. Looking at this Old Testament book, the prophet Isaiah, we focus in on verse 18 and part of 19, for it simply says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see I am doing a new thing. Please read that with me. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. One more time, like gas dropped down to a dollar. Come on, let's say it. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Amen. With the aid of the Holy Spirit, we lift up this text and today preach on our subject, when God does a new thing. When God does a new thing. Church, I have discovered that the God of creation and the God of the universe is always doing wonderful things. Can somebody say amen right there? Church, I've discovered that the God of our existence and even the God of our future is always showing up and always showing out when it comes to extraordinary events and supernatural occurrences. For just think about it, uh, because it is only God. Uh, that can give us 12 months divided by four seasons, broken into 52 weeks that miraculously equals 365 days. It is only God who can make a world split it into seven continents where 7.3 billion people live, speaking 6,909 different languages in four different hemispheres that is regulated by the temperature of only one singular sun. It is only God, y'all, that can make the clouds that can produce the same clouds produce rain and hail and sleet and snow. It is only God who can create an Amazon rainforest, a Niagara Falls, the harbor of Rio de Janeiro, and the majestic peaks of Mount Everest. And to bring it closer to home, my friends, it is only God who can turn defeat into victory, who can take leftovers and serve a banquet, who can make miracles out of messes, and who can take a rebuilding product out of brokenness. Only God. Can you say only God? And see, it's only God that we've come to worship, and it's only God that we've come to acknowledge. It's only God that we've come to serve. It is only God that which we acknowledge. Right now, I got to give a shout out to the people who know it's only God. Only God woke you up this morning. Only God made a way out of no way. Only God answered your prayer. Only God healed your body. Only God made you who you are. Only God. It's only God. You see, when you think about that only God, you cannot help but to understand in this season of graduation celebration, in this season of people walking across the stage, I, I can't help but to give a shout out, not just those who have walked across the stages of, of Ivy League schools and, and the big colleges and, and the major universities. I, I got to go a little bit closer to home. Come with me to Gastonia. I got to give a shout out, y'all, to two graduates of Gaston Community College. 
acknowledged by the name of Hillary Ford and Kuanta Kuin. You have to understand Hillary Ford, y'all, is a survivor of domestic violence. Hillary Ford, y'all, is an overcomer of drug and alcohol addiction. And last week on March the third, on May the 13th, Friday, she walked across the stage with an associate degree, y'all, having overcome domestic violence and having overcome, y'all, alcohol and drug addiction. She says, y'all, is that I am showing my child that even though she is on the spectrum, even though she's on the peripheral, she can do everything she wants to do. Even if she stopped going to high school, she can always go back. This is somebody who is a living testimony who can say only God. But you see, not only she can say it, but Ohan can say the same thing. Ohan, y'all, from West Africa, found himself coming to the United States in 2001. Could not speak the English the way that we speak the English, but he did not let that language barrier stop him from getting an associate degree again at Gaston Community College. Ohan, y'all, a father of three, a husband, a hardworking man, y'all, he says is that he wants to show his children that they can do anything they set their mind to do, I would encourage everyone, he says, to never give up. Can you shout, never give up? Never give up on your dream. Never give up on your desire. Never give up on your pursuit. Never give up on what God has placed in your life. You see, when you understand only God, I can't help but to drop my tweet on you for the week. Here's my tweet for the week. You can repost it if you want to. Here it is. God is more than a God of second chance. God is a God of new beginnings. I got to hang out there just for a little bit, Dr. Monroe, because I don't know if people understand. It's not a second chance that God gives you. God gives you a new beginning. God God gives you not a do-over, but God is a God of new beginnings. And a new beginning means that the old has passed away. Behold, all things become. Here we go. Here we go. You see, when you understanding when you understand what God does in your life and there's an only God you may have heard me say it before brother Grant it's it, it's it, it, it's not how you start it's how you end up it, it's not what they call you it's what you answer to it's it's not your resources it's your relationships it's it's not the obstacles but it's the opportunities that you find in the difficulties Let me see if I can share with you the narrative behind this scripture from chapter 43 of the book of Isaiah. It serves as a clarion call, y'all, from the prophet himself who is doing what he does best. That is serving as a mouthpiece for almighty God. It is during these most trying times that God sends a message to a messenger to a people who need it the most. At this time, the Israelites are being held captive in Babylon and that they are at their lowest points. Why? Because they are discouraged. Why? Because they feel defeated. Why? Because they feel deflated. And why? Because they feel depressed. At their lowest point, y'all, God sends a word through the prophet Isaiah. And that may be a word for somebody this Sunday morning in church or watching online that God will send a word to you at your lowest point. God will send an answer at the moment when you need it the most. God has a way of opening up doors when man cry to close them. God has a way of letting stuff sleep out when you try to hold on to it yourself. At the low point, God sends a word through the prophet Isaiah. He sends a message because God knew that God's people needed some reassurance. The prophet, y'all, lived during a time when God's children had chosen, the chosen nation of Israel had completely turned away from God spiritually turned away from God spiritually. Don't know if you can understand how that word some 600 years before Christ was born and some 2,000 years ago still is relevant today that when the people turn away from God, when they get their hearts cold cold hearts to God, God has to send a word to wake them up. God has to send a word to remind them. God has to send a word to say, I'm still in charge. 
You see, the prophet, he preached, he proclaimed to the southern kingdom of Judah and foresaw the coming Babylonians' captivity that if the people did not return from their wicked ways, they would suffer. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and turn from their way. If my people who are called by my name, my folk who got a cross around their neck, big old Bible under their arm, got some shirts. Caesar on your playlist if my people who are called by my name will simply humble themselves and pray and metanoia turn from their wicked ways I will hear and heal the land you see to sum this up Isaiah is saying that I want to give you some hope can you shout hope that's what the word is, y'all. Isaiah is saying, I'm going to give you some hope. The hope that will fulfill your life. The hope that will give you joy. The hope that is found in none other than the precious son, Jesus Christ. Isaiah's word, y'all, is to teach the people of Judah that if they will trust in God, God will give them some hope. But verse 18 is where we open up and we hang out with today because verse 18 says, forget about your past, forget about the former things, don't think about them. Say, don't think about it. You see, the word forget, the word forget literally means, Brother Stephans, to stop talking about it. Okay. The word forget in this text is not saying get amnesia. It's simply saying quit talking about the things of your past. Quit bringing up old stuff, trying to give life to it again, because God is doing a new thing. Okay. This does not mean that your past should not be a part of your story. It, it might just mean that it should not be the main point or the main theme of everything you talk about. You see, it's like this. Just because it was a paragraph or a chapter of your book of life does not mean it have to be the whole title of your book of life. Yeah, Reverend, I had some tough times, but every time that we have a cookout, quit bringing up your tough times. Yeah, Reverend, I went through a bad relationship, but every time I'm watching a game show, quit talking about your bad relationships. Yeah, Reverend, they stole money from me. No, we watching the NBA playoffs. Quit bringing up what somebody stole from you. I'm tired of you talking about it says forget those things of the past. You see, it's like this. Many times, y'all, we give too much credence and too much credit for stuff that's happened in the past. Many times, y'all, we would rather talk about water that's run under the bridge than talk about how beautiful the sky is shining to... You see, you see, what we have to realize, friends, God is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm about ready to blow your mind. I'm about ready to open up the windows of heaven. I'm about ready to show you some stuff. If you just sit back and relax and hold on, God says, I'm getting ready to give you what you've been looking for. I'm about to show you the kind of faith that God desires, faith that will allow you to use your failures and your setbacks as a stepping stone, faith that tells you that your darkest hour, that God is still the brightest light, faith that says that God is bigger than your most powerful enemy, faith that tells you that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the above. You see, the prophet, he warns us, y'all, that if we will focus not focus on the past successes and look to what God did back then, but look to what God is doing right now, the Bible says, I will use that to propel you into some new things. The fact, the fact, the fact of the matter, Brother L, is like this. If you want to repeat history, just do what you've been doing. But if you want to make history, do what's never been done before. I'm going to high five you on that one right there. If you want to make history, you've got to do what's never been done before. But if you want to just repeat history, you need to keep doing what you've always done. I got to say that again. The fact of the matter is that if you want to repeat history, keep doing what you've always done. But if you want to make history, do what's never been done before. 
Do you realize, you realize that, 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 that this church, this ministry, in the height of the pandemic, y'all, we had more people on our church parking lot than we've ever had for a worship service. Why? Because they came to get a shot. Do you realize that we now feed more people on a monthly basis than we could ever feed at a homecoming because we're kicking food out to people who need it the most? Do you realize that C.N. Jenkins Church is not just known as a church across the street from the Alexander's Funeral Home? It's a church that gives food, a church that gives hope, a church that gives love, a church that gives invitation. Do you realize that God is doing a new thing? But, but you see, you, you, you don't have to do this by yourself. For the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things. The promise came from God to the children of Israel at the blink of history. They are in captivity. They are lost. They've lost everything. And God says, I give you a promise. God says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past, for I'm doing a new thing. Thing. The Bible says that God gives us the promise, and the promise, y'all, is in two words, transcend and transform. The promises of God, they come to us as they transcend and as they transform. Can you say transcend? Come on, you got to say transcend. Now say transform. Now you got to shout transform like, I'm going to fill your gas tank up today. Can you say transform? Okay, that was too exciting, too, too. I was just making the illustration. I was not being real. Amen. <laughs> to transcend, in, in, me, in me, it means in a verb sense to, to be or be, to go beyond the range of limits and rise above. With God doing a new thing, you're going to go above and beyond. You're going to be like Star Trek. Go where no one has ever gone before. Just transcend, but to transform means that you're going to make a thorough dramatic change in the form of appearance of your character. A thorough dramatic change. It's not meaning you're just going to change a little bit, but you're going to be thoroughly changed. It's like the caterpillar going into the butterfly. Yes, we know the transformation takes place, but guess what? The butterfly never goes back to being a caterpillar again. When God changes your life, you don't go back to being the old person. When God steps in your life, you don't go all back to the, the old way of thinking. When God changes your life, you are transcended and you are transformed. You see, you see, when you understand what God is saying to us, I believe he's talking about a repositioning of new things. And, and many times we, 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 we mis misinterpret and misread this passage. It says, I will do a new thing. But many of us want God to do new things. But if you are faithful to God of the thing that God gives you, you will get a new thing and not new things because God will change the thing and you will see it differently. Huh? It, it, it's like this. We want God to give us new things. God, I'm believing for a new Cadillac. God says, watch that Oldsmobile. Put some air freshener in the Oldsmobile. Put some tie gloss on the Oldsmobile. And I guarantee you still got some swag in the Oldsmobile. Somebody say amen. God, I'm believing you for a six-pack. Now, you know as well as I do, just because you say it don't mean it ain't going to happen, amen? You got to do some work to get the six-pack, amen? God is saying, I want you to be more healthy in your diet process. I want you to be more intentional about drinking water. I want you to be more active, shall we say, and not sedentary in your ways. God, I'm believing you for marriage. Well, if you don't like you, how in the world do you think somebody else is going to like you? Quit asking God for new things and recognize God's going to do a new, new, new thing in your life. Forget the form of things. Do not dwell on the past. If you're currently looking behind y'all, you got to realize that God is speaking in your future. I've said it before. The windshield is always bigger than the rearview mirror. Put more attention on where you're going as opposed to where you come from. 
I, I like the way Paul says it. Paul says it in Philippians. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things, he says, but I press. I press to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus, forgetting the past, he says, looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. I, I press. Can you say press? You got to press your way forward. You got to press your way through. Quit looking on what happened in the past. Do you realize the only way the devil, the enemy trips you and traps you is talking about your past? The devil don't know your future. God knows your future. And quit listening to the devil when he brings up your past. That's a lie straight out of hell. I'm talking about what you used to be. And the devil will tell you on two things. He'll hang you up on what you've done badly and remind you that's all you're ever going to do. Or he'll give you one or two successes and think that's the most you could ever have. God says, I'm doing a new thing. God says, I'm opening up some new ways. God says, I'm going to give you some water in the desert. I'm going to give you life in dead situations. God says, I'm bringing you some new things. Oh, you see, if you are going to move to new things in Christ, you cannot depend upon past victories to sustain you. And you cannot allow past failures to possess you. Don't depend on the past victories. Don't talk about what we used to do. Don't talk about how many people used to come to CN Jenkins. This is it right here. This is it. That right there is it. Don't talk about, well, you know, we, we don't believe in TV evangelism. We, people need to come to church. No, sugar baby, there are people watching right now who would not be in church. If it had not been for some cameras and some audio. Don't talk about past victories and rest right there. And also, you cannot allow your past failures to possess you. Well, you know. If I hadn't got that DWI, well, you did. <laughs> if I hadn't quit my job, <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> if I hadn't bought them shoes that I could not afford, then I would have money. Well, you did. We talk about what you, if you could, if I hadn't walked out on him. Yeah, you walked out on him, now you're alone. Amen, you did. Be careful about what you used to do and how you used to possess it. You see, the Bible is trying to help us recognize, y'all, is, is that the people were so separated. And God is saying, I've got to speak back to my people. I've got to let them know that I love them, that I care about them, that I want the very best for them. You see, you cannot allow your past failures to possess you. For the children of Israel had failed God miserably. Every time God blessed them. They, they were good things. They would turn around and do bad things back to God. Every time God blessed them, they returned some evil things to God. God gave them a temple. They gave God idol worship. God gave them the truth. They proclaimed a lie. God gave them commandments. They lived like they were suggestions. God gave them wealth. They used it to abuse the poor. God gave them himself. They gave him nothing but rejection. And God is saying that I love you so much. I, I want to come back to you. And, and we keep going over this thing over and over and over. God's saying, tell me what's wrong with you now. Tell me why I never seem to make you happy. No heaven knows. Break up to me. That's all we, yes, then you hate me, that's our game. You, you got to realize that that's the kind of God that we serve, that's the kind of God that we love, that's the kind of God that says, I'm going to send my only son to die on the cross for your soul, that's the kind of God that shed his blood, that's the kind of God that says, I will lay down my life so you can have life eternally. The children of Israel, they didn't deserve 
to receive anything good from God. At least they thought they couldn't, but God, y'all, he was not condemning them for their past. They could do nothing to change that. Instead, God was holding out a hand of hope. A hand of hope. You can make it. A hand of hope. You can make a difference. A hand of hope. You are made in God's image. A hand of hope that, that God is saying, I, I want the very best for you in your life. You see, it's like this, my friends. You cannot live on yesterday's faith. That's the challenge right there. The people are trying to live in yesterday's faith and yesterday's word. And God is saying is I want my people called by my name to live in such a way that it is loving and caring to everybody else. The faith in what God had done was doing nothing to deliver them from their present situations. What did God do? God says, I'm going to open up the Red Sea and you're going to go across it. God says, I'm going to open up the Jordan River and you will go across it. And understand God is now saying the very thing that I had to part and separate so you can go through God said I'm going to use that very thing to bless you with in the desert don't miss that God says, I use water to separate it so you can cross. God says, now in the desert I'm going to use that same water to nourish your soul. You missed your shout right there. God says the thing that, that was a burden to you now is going to be a blessing. God says the thing that was a downtrodden is now going to be to lift you up. God says the thing that held you down will now be the thing that restores your soul. Oh, hear what I'm saying this morning, y'all, because what God says to us this Sunday morning, you must first see yourself as God sees you. And secondly, you must see your possibilities as God sees them, as God sees them. Don't know if you've ever flown in the LAX airport, but if you've ever flown there or been picked up from there, there's something called the Thing Building. The Thing Building is that iconic super, super space spaceship kind of kind of kind of building there it's an observation that y'all that was designed by Paul Revere Williams Paul Revere Williams y'all was a black architect in Los Angeles four years old he was an orphan his daddy died at two his mama died at four he was put into foster care he was put into schools y'all he was the only black person in his classroom his teacher told him you should not study architect because you have your skin color. They will never accept you as an architect. Here's what Paul Revere Williams did, y'all. He learned mathematics and architectural drawings so well, y'all, is that he could draw the pictures upside down. Why? Because white people didn't want to sit beside him. So what Paul Revere Williams learned to do was to draw sketches up. You're not getting that, y'all. I'm not saying like when the waitress rides, drive, wrote, writes your name at Outback upside down on that piece of paper. That's one thing but you can draw a whole building upside down so somebody can see it. That's using the gifts of Almighty God. Paul Revere Williams, y'all, designed the house for Lucille Ball and Ricky Ricardo. Paul Revere Williams designed the house for Frank Sinatra and, and Charles Carroll. Paul Revere Williams, y'all, designed the house for Cary Grant. He designed the first Saks Fifth Avenue in Los Angeles. Now, of course, you've been there. I ain't been there, you know. If it would have been the Walmart in Los Angeles, I would have been there, but I can't give a testify. Yes, he did. This is the same black man that designed a first African a first AME church in Los Angeles. The same 1951 uh, Omega Psi Phi Man of the Year. The same 1953 Spin God Medal of Honor for NAACP. The same man who got an honorary degree from Howard University, Lincoln University, Tuskegee Institute. This is the same man, y'all, who let God use him in such a way. You see, when God uses you, God can take what other folk reject and use it as a rejoicing point. Let me see if I can close, if I can close this text to you so you will understand what God is saying to us here today. The Bible tells us in, in Isaiah 43, 19, that God says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. See, see, the Bible says that I am doing a new thing. Uh, I, it springs up. Do you not perceive? 
receive it. I am making a way in the wilderness. Now, the word, the operative word here, my friends, is that what uh, do you per not perceive it? Perceive it in the Hebrew, y'all. It is simply a word that means declare and decree. Okay. The Hebrew word that perceives right here, Brother Jerome, means declare and decree. And every now and then, as believers in Almighty God, when God says, I'm going to do a new thing, we need to practice what the Holiness Church says, I decree and declare it. Okay. You see, we miss our blessings sometimes because we talk ourselves out of what God has for us. We miss our up, our come up, our breakthrough because we forget to speak the word of Almighty God. And what God tells us in this text is that I'm going to do a new thing. Can you not perceive it? Can you not decree and declare it? Okay, okay, let me see if I can give you some help. This week, which is week we were having staff meeting, Mama Julia and I pulled up one of my little calendar things, and it gave us the story of a Marine Rogers Croak. Marine Rogers Croak, y'all, is a phenomenal African-American uh, scientist, born in 1955, educated at Princeton University, y'all. She worked for Bell Laboratories, but more importantly, as the vice president of Google right now, she got that job, y'all, because she was the inventor of the VO IP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. See, Brother David, I did my homework. And all the techie folk know what I'm talking about. Voice over, 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 over Internet Protocol. That, that is the ability to translate voice and picture at the same time. They didn't get it. So here it is. Voice over Internet Protocol. That is the ability, my friends, to have a Zoom call where you see people and hear them at the same time. Voice over internet protocol. That's the ability, y'all, to have FaceTime or Google Duo. Come on, help me somebody. This black woman who daddy bought her a chemistry set back in the 19, early 60s, y'all, a graduate of Princeton, developed the voice over internet protocol. And, and the reason I bring that up because is that now because of her invention, not only in the pandemic but going forward, we can always have voice and, and face at the same time. Okay, okay, all right, all right. I got one more I got to give you. Here it is. Because of her invention, y'all, we now have what we call the use of Alexa and Siri. And I don't know if you're an Amazon person or an Android person, but somehow, some way, in your house, in your car, in your sphere of influence, somebody got an Alexa or a Siri. And what I found out, y'all, is that sometimes when, when I get kind of not, say, lazy, but I don't practice all that I should be practicing, I call on Alexa to give me some help. And if you don't believe me, try it when you get home and you got an Alexa. Let's say, Alexa, give me a word of inspiration. And Alexa just might say, the Lord makes me the head and not the tail. Alexa, give me some inspiration. Alexa might say, I will always be on the top and never below. Alexa, give me some inspiration. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Come on, come on, come on. Siri, give me some information. I'm blessed going out and coming in. Uh, Alexa, tell me what I need to know that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You see, you need some declarations and you need to have some decrees in your life. Decrees in your life that says God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You, you need to say, Alexa, let me know what I need to know when I'm going through some sickness. And Alexa might say, by his stripes, you are healed. Alexa, give me some strength when I don't know which way to go. Alexa might say that you are the light of the world. A lamp do not put a shade on itself, but shine so that sinful people can see the light of Almighty God. Alexa, help me know what it means to have a new spirit. Alexa might say, I am a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, I become new. Alexa, help me understand when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Alexa, Alexa might say, fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Alexa, give me some strength when I'm going through the fiery darts of hell. Alexa might say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
Alexa, let me know how I can keep on keeping on. Alexa might say, my God supplies all of your needs according to his riches in glory. My friends, it's a new season. It's a new day. God's fresh anointing is flowing your way. You don't have to worry about anything or worry about anybody. You are in a new season of life right now. Come on, stand to your feet. Give God some praise because God's doing a new thing in your life, a new thing in your family, a new thing on your job, a new thing in your mind, a new thing in your heart, a new thing in your spirit. God is able to do not just old stuff, but new things in your life. What an amazing word, y'all. It's always great to hear and be encouraged about all the great and wonderful things God is doing in our lives. Wasn't it a great sermon? Well, if you liked it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our content, all the videos, all the services. Watch some old services if you would like to stay encouraged and motivated until next Sunday. Once again, if you would like to follow us, make sure you check out our Instagram page, our YouTube page, Facebook, and our website, okay? If you would like to give, make sure you do that. All the information is on the screen as well as our website. We hope to see you soon. God bless. We love you. We care about you. We want the very best for you. I just believe that God's doing some new things in your life. Amen. Hear these words of benediction and blessing unto that God who wants to do new and powerful things in our life. Unto that God who looks beyond our faults and still meets our needs. Unto that God who knows your heart, your mind, and your spirit. May grace, mercy, and peace be with you this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, let all of God's children say amen. amen. Say amen again. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Amen.